Hello, and welcome to Breaking It All Down. I'm Count Zero, and I'm back. And it's been about three months-ish since the last video I did. Short version for this is I've had a paid internship and schoolwork taking up large portions of my time. So, long story short, I don't have time to do videos. Now I do. As an update for what this means for the show, um, this internship was paid. Which means I was able to set some money aside to work on improving stuff for the show. I've recently picked up a Elgato Game Capture HD, which will allow me to do game capture better than what I was doing before. Uh, also, it should allow me to do some live streams, um, so I can kind of scratch it off the Patreon list. Additionally, I should, knock on wood, be able to get a camera set up, an actual real camera camera set up, um, that I can use for recording video rather than having to use the webcam that I've been using for the past few years. So we should see a notable increase in picture quality, hopefully. Um, sound quality wise, I've cut out most of, I mean, that I have one less fluorescent light in my filming area. I have an LED light going now. Um, so that should make things easier in terms of background noise quality and that sort of thing as well. All that out of the way, um, I might as well review something. If you've been following my written stuff all the way back when I started on the blog, uh, you'll remember that I used to do a certain degree of mute. Uh, music discussion stuff, a few album reviews, concert movie reviews, documentary DVD reviews, that sort of thing. So I recently picked up, or rather checked out, Led Zeppelin Celebration Day. So their reunion concert from 2007. Um, being that content ID is a thing that exists, this, I'm doing this vlog style rather than, you know, proper review style because honestly, well, this ain't gonna fly if I was using any concert footage at all. So, Got to do this vlog style. Um, I've been wanting to watch this for quite some time, ever since I heard that the surviving members of Led Zeppelin were getting back together to do a reunion concert. Um, I say surviving because if you're familiar at all with the history of the, if you're unfamiliar with the history of the band, the drummer of Led Zeppelin, John Bonham, died in 1980, um, when he suffocated on his own vomit after drinking to excess, which should hopefully be a lesson to people that drink responsibly doesn't just mean have a designated driver, don't drink and drive. If you get really drunk, ha have somebody with you who's either not drinking or not getting drunk to go home with you and kind of hang out with you for the sake of your own health. So if you experience alcohol toxicity, alcohol poisoning, or you'll get sick, there's somebody to call for an ambulance or perform a Heimlich maneuver or any sort of thing to, you know, save your life. I mean, we've lost Bonham. And just go, I mean, just go off the top of my head, John Bonham and Bon Scott of ACDC uh, were, lost, were lost basically this way. Never mind of the various drug overdoses of people like Dennis Chaplin and that sort of thing. But anyway, getting on a more upbeat note, after uh, John Bonham's death, the men, the band broke up, and the band members were off to do their own thing, some with more varying degrees of success. I'm particularly focusing on, on that statement with Robert Plant's solo career. In 2007, um, Jason Bonham, John's son, had been shaping up to be a very good drummer in his own right, and was pushing around the idea of doing a tribute tour, which he actually is doing now, um, but managed to basically persuade the three surviving members of the band to get back together and do a, re a short reunion series of concerts um, with himself on drums. And because, well, honestly, not everybody in the world who was a, a Zeppelin fan was going to get to see these concerts, they put out a concert film. Celebration Day, which this release here is the Blu-ray release, also comes with two CDs with the um, as an album version of the concert. So you have something to listen to in your car. I think this is an appropriate thing to do, bring up a review as well, and since one of my concert movie reviews I did was uh, Led Zeppelin, The Song Remains the Same. One of the kind of the 
one of the most famous concert albums of all time, next to the band The Last Waltz. So, I will say, but if anything disappointed me about this movie at all, is... The song remains the same and had some interesting directorial stuff to it um, that made it more than just your average concert film. Um, we had, in terms of photography, we had some interesting kaleidoscopic stuff with um, during um, the guitar solo on a couple songs, Stairway to Heaven in particular, um, but also, I don't remember if they did, um, on Sargon, it's the same. If they did, um, oh crap, uh, from Physical Graffiti, uh, have the album, one second, The Rover. I think they did The Rover in there, because I do remember them doing Trampled Underfoot in the, um, uh, Song Remains the Same concert tour as well. They also did, on uh, Song Remains the Same, they had, um, the, um, uh, No Quarter, which also the other thing that that Song Remains, Song Remains the Same did that was interesting visually, is they have these little interludes isn't the right word. Probably a better description would be vignettes. Um, there was an opening vignette, which had nothing to do with the concert at all, which involved the members of Led Zeppelin dressed up as sort of semi-gangsters, um, going to a house where there was, where we, where we see some Nazi gangsters doing nefarious things, and then members of the Zeppelin come in, shoot up the place with Tommy guns, and we, and the bad guys when they die, and the, which the dummies when they die, bleed technicolor blood. Like, red paint, blue paint, uh, yellow paint, and a few other different shades. Well, I believe I remember red, blue, and yellow, because they were the ones that would, like, stuck out the most, color-wise. We also had some vignettes, uh, vignettes, but interludes, this would be actually interludes backstage, um, with the band's manager dealing with people selling counterfeit merchandise and chasing them out of the, uh, venue. And, yeah, there was one other interlude with the song No Quarter, as well. They both kind of could have come across as being self-indulgent, but I think they added a certain degree of visual flair and charm to the film, which made it different from any other concert film I've seen. Uh, different from Pink Floyd Live at Pompeii, different from The Last Waltz. I'm a little disappointed we didn't, they didn't do anything like that. Just a little nod to what had come before. What a nice touch. I understand why they didn't do it, but I think it would have made it a little more special. Led Zeppelin only did ten albums, and they only really did one concert film. And doing some stylistic nods to things past would have been a nice, t- nice touch. What about the rest of it? Can they still go? These are guys who are their 60s or 70s, with the exception of Jason Bonham, how do they perform? How do they sing? I mean, years can do a number on a person's voice. Good news is, they can still go. I mean, they're not, in their stage attire, we don't have Robert Plant with his shirt half open or all open or anything like that, like from, you look at it and perform back in the 70s, but he still, he still sings really well. Everyone, to like, it's like they hadn't left, aside from, you know, vis- visible age and that sort of thing. Uh, they do have a bit more sense of, like, yeah, we are kind of, we're dads now, some of us dads with grown kids, so we probably should, I say dress the part, but dress like we understand our age. Um... Even if we don't want to act our age, probably it from me to criticize people for fashion, but, um, Robert Plant also has a beard now, a uh, beard and mustache, which is weird because every previous performance of his I've seen, um, whether concert films or music videos from back when he was doing his solo albums or his 
sort of swing revival album with the project The Honey Drippers. Um, for all of those, clean shaven. We'll still keep clean shaven and still with the long hair. I mean, still got the long hair now, but all clean shaven. So seeing him come on stage with a beard and mustache, there was a certain degree of whoa moment there. The set list on here is very good. Um, it's a little focused on Zeppelin 4 on. You have the set list. You don't have, like, no, um, immigrant song. No communication breakdown. Uh, which I think is a little uh, interesting. Communication breakdown was their first big hit. And I have their, uh, on my, uh, DB, on my CD shelf, I've got the, uh, Led Zeppelin BBC sessions. And, like, one disc of the set is basically just different variations on communication breakdown from various, uh, BBC shows that they performed on before they decided, no, if we're gonna be, do live stuff, we're gonna be live in the context of concert rather than just in a recording studio. Rather than doing the, the Ed Sullivan show shtick. I mean, we got, we do have stuff like uh, Dazed and Confused and Good Time, Bad Times on here, and um, Rock and Roll, which I think Rock and Roll is like one of the really, I want to say three or two or three, I forget, um, but it, it's, as much as Led Zeppelin has a early and late period, this tends to be more towards like the late side, though, to be fair, their, their late side is like Led Zeppelin 4, Rune's album, on. But anyway. Um, set list is good. Um, Jason Bonham is a good drummer. He doesn't sound like exactly like his dad, but he has the power and force and speed behind his work that... John Bonham had that that gives the percussion for Zeppelin their unique sound. Additionally, the other members of the band, it's clear that they haven't been like ignoring other music um in the past few years. I mean, admittedly I names are falling out of my head. Jimmy Page. Jimmy mainly Jimmy Page of the documentary It Might Get Loud, where it was him um Jack White and The Edge um, doing a guitar jam session. But it's kind of clear that Jimmy Page has been paying attention to what's been going on in guitar music, because like, guitar riff in I want to say it was uh, Trampled Under either Trampled Underfoot or Cashmere. They kind of there's there's a little bit at the beginning, which is not from the original song, where it kind of feels like borrowing some cues from like Tom Morello and a few other uh, more recent guitarists on there, in terms of the roughness of the guitar sound that gives that gives this performance a kind of a different feel to it. Um, that where you're gaining, well, I'm sure you're gaining something, but you're getting a different feeling that you would if if you were just popping the appropriate Led Zeppelin album in your CD player or, or on your record player and listening to it that way. Other weird little bit is the second song in the set is Ramble On. Ramble On is, I mean, they do fantasy nods to some of their various other, in, in their various other songs in the past. We refer to the Lord of the Rings, uh, Battle of Evermore, in fact, uh, has Zeppelin, has, um, Tolkien Irvitz's, for example, uh, Ramble On does as well. Um, the line is, In the darkest depths of Mordor, I met a girl so fair, but Gollum and the evil one swept up and slipped away with her. For some reason, Robert Plant decides, I'm not, I'm, I'm going to kind of downplay this lyric, where, I don't know if it's like, if you, if it's like, I don't know, the Tolkien estate decided to get up on his grill about, Tolkien references in Zeppelin music. Gollum is a registered trademark of the Tolkien estate. You can't use that word. You can't use that name. 
If you don't, Christopher Tolkien's very highly paid army of lawyers will sue you and your record label. Or, I don't know, maybe with the new sort of wave of Tolkien heads, Tolkien fans, ringers, what have you, coming up in the wake of the Lord of the Rings films, maybe Robert Plant doesn't want Zeppelin to be thought of as, oh, that Tolkien, ba Tolkien band. I don't know. They shouldn't be ashamed of that. Sing it loud, sing it proud. Goodness knows you sing everything else loud. Other than that, it's... The Audio Master is also really good. It's probably worth mentioning for take the side of things. I've listened to a few live albums where the live sound mix doesn't is not great. It doesn't do a good job of balancing the the band and the crowd music, the crowd noise. I mean, Zep, Iron Maiden on their album uh, A Real Dead One has a real problem with this. Not a good balance between the crowd noise and the band. Whereas, say, Flight 666, other than that, I think if you're, if you're a fan of Zeppelin, this is, uh, definitely a worthy album to add to your collection. Album and, D and DVD. If you're trying to get someone interested in Zeppelin and maybe they found the vignette sections of, uh, Song or Mames the same, bump them out of the movie, bump them out of the concert. And it wasn't just more of a pure concert film. This is certainly something for that. We'll cover that base. I definitely recommend checking that out um, and passing it along to those people. Um, and again, this release comes with two CDs. So after you've watched the concert, you can rip the CDs, put them on your iPod, Listen to them in your car stereo, on your regular stereo, what have you, to your heart's content. So that, that wraps that up. I have some book reviews that I'll be doing for future episodes. I will, be, of course, be returning to the Nintendo Power Retrospectives. We're coming to the end of yet another year of Nintendo Power Magazine. So we can get back get started on that again. Um, I have a fanzine at efanzines.com It's called Breaking It All Down the Zine. Not, hard, not too hard to find. Read that. Post the comments on that. Read other people's fanzines. And of course, the pa there is the Patreon. I need to adjust the Patreon um, reward, the, the uh, goal levels to reflect my recent acquisitions of equipment. But go ahead, check out the Patreon. I will have the link in the show note. The link in the show notes below. And you are on the credits. So, I've been going on for a while. I'm back. I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.